geologists map a nine magnitude earthquake impact on the Cascadia subduction zone. Community members are encouraged to have at least 30 days of supplies as it may take days or weeks before help can access you and your home after a large earthquake is what they're saying. It's by Matthew Nash, Second Gazette. From uh, the map we're going to see is from the Department of Natural Resources showing the potential flooding impact from a tsunami caused by a nine magnitude earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone. New maps through a study by geologists with the Washington Geological Survey Division of Washington Department of Natural Resources show that a 9.0 magnitude earthquake could be devastating to the state's coastlines and roadways, including along the entirety of the Olympic Peninsula. A new study, which became available days after the undersea volcano erupted by Tonga January 15, uses a simulated magnitude 9.0 earthquake on the Cascadia subduction zone, according to Department of Natural Resources DNR staff. Geologists predict the first tsunami waves could reach La Push 10 minutes from the start of the earthquake and Washington's Pacific coast in about 30 minutes. Port Angeles would see waves about an hour from the earthquake start. Dungeness at about 80 minutes, Miller Peninsula about 85 minutes, Blinn 90 minutes and Discovery Bay about 95 minutes. Along the Pacific coast flooding could reach over 60 feet, geologists predict, and 100 feet at Yellow Banks Beach in Olympic National Park. That's huge, obviously. The Sikkim area could see inundation of about 10 feet in Dungeon East, 7 feet Port Williams County Park, and portions of Gardiner and Miller Peninsula, 6 feet at Washington Harbor, and 5 feet at Blinn. Discovery Bay has the largest potential for flooding at a predicted 33 feet, which would likely block and or destroy portions of US Highway 101 and State Route 112. Commissioner of Public Lands Hilary Franz said via press release that the quote, report shows what we've long known. There won't be time for our coastal communities to react after a major earthquake, so it's vital we provide these detailed models and keep our communities safe when, not if, the next Cascadia, me Cascadia mega quake hits, end quote. So they, it will hit. It's a matter of time, it's when. DNR staff said the last Cascadia rupture occurred 321 years ago, and experts estimate a 10 to 17% chance of a rupture in the next 50 years. Geologists' model does not include tide stages or local tsunamis triggered by earthquake-induced landslides. Efforts have been made for years to prepare for a major disaster across the peninsula, including Joyce, Seccombe, and West End. And Seccombe's efforts, Dan Orr, Assistant Fire Chief with Clallam County Fire District 3, said they have 14 Community Emergency Response Teams, or CERT, across the Seccombe area, and 445 trained individuals and 12 training now who could be integral to, to helping their neighbors in an event like a Cascadia earthquake. Or said, we're happy DNR is starting to recognize the potential that could happen here with the threat of Cascadia or a large seismic event. Blaine uh, Ch uh, Chanelli, disaster planning EMT for Clallam County Fire District 3, said he was surprised by DRNA's data on subsidence or the amount of sinking or caving in of some areas. Geologists report that tsunami would first arrive as a trough with sea levels gradually receding in all intercoastal waterways. Zecchinelli said news data, new data show 13 feet inundation in Nea Bay and along State Route 112 that would render much of the road in repair irreparable as it would be at sea level. Zacchanelli said, for the Strait of Juan de Fuca, here our advice of being higher than 50 feet remains the same. Our CERT effort, CERT effort, continues to focus on effect search and rescue for the second area. This report validates the need for this and shows we were on track, he said. Previously, Orr said sizable islands would form in the second area following a large earthquake from Discovery Bay to Blinn from Blinn to the Dungeonese River 
and from the river to McDonald Creek, and from that creek to Seabird Creek. Other overpasses and smaller bridges may collapse and block vehicle traffic to create micro islands as well, he said. Community members are encouraged to have at least 30 days of supplies, as it may take days or weeks before help can access you and your home after a large earthquake. Or said they continue to offer CERT CERT classes during the COVID-19 pandemic with safety protocols. They are also emphasizing efforts to train people to shelter in place during emergencies and they've signed a contract with Trinity United Methodist Church to be a shelter during an emergency like a Cascadia quake. Or said they're working with other faith-based communities to consider being shelters with support from Clayland County possible too. Uh, for more on emergency preparedness, you can visit ccfd3.org. To coordinate with CERT, contact Cindy Zetonelli at CERT at ccfd3.org. And uh, to see the new studies and maps, you can visit tinyurl at uh, at, .com at uh, sequ C uh, S E Q Tsunami. And this is by Matthew Nash, Second Magazine uh, Gazette on Bended Reality. We are at uh, noaa.gov concerning tsunamis. And we see that uh, most of them are, of course, a result of earthquakes below or near the ocean floor, forcing the uh, from the forward creating waves radiate outwards in all directions away from resource. And uh, tsunamis happened in the United States. In 1964, tsunamis devastated coastal communities in Alaska. Impacts were felt along U.S., Canadian West Coast, and in Hawaii. Tsunami movement. And uh, what you might not have noticed, about 25 meteor tsunamis hit the East Coast each year. I didn't even know that. Driven by severe weather, these waves exacerbate flooding, erosion, and can even cause injury. Tsunami safety only becomes hazardous when they approach land. So tsunami enters shallow water near coastal shores, slows up, the wavelength decreases, the height increases, and currents intensify. Tsunami warnings come in different forms. Often official warnings issued by tsunami warning centers broadcast through local radio, television, wireless emergency alerts, and NOAA weather radios, websites, social media may also come through outdoor sirens, local officials, text message alerts, and telephone notifications. There may not be time to wait for an official warning, obviously. So it's important to be able to recognize warning signs, including strong long earthquakes or loud roars coming from the ocean and a sudden rise or fall of the sea level that is not related to the tide. Official and natural warnings are equally important. Be prepared to respond immediately to any tsunami warnings. Move quickly to a safe place by following posted evacuation signs. If you don't see an evacuation route, go to high ground as far as inland as possible. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account the daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.